Hello everyone, these notes are about evolution myths and misconceptions for Unit 9. Let's start with a little bit about why does it really even matter. Um, so this is a great video, I recommend you check it out, but here's a rundown. Uh, through knowledge about shrinking fish and how grasslands have turned into deserts, our knowledge about evolution has led us to make better environmental policies that are good for helping us understand our resources and make better decisions with them. Uh, whether it's environmentally or economically. Uh, through our evolutionary knowledge about HIV and f the flu and how antibiotics um, have stopped working as well against bacteria, uh, our knowledge about those things have really come from uh, evolutionary studies of these organisms and how natural selection works here. So by understanding this stuff, we can better treat viruses, we can better make vaccines for them, and we can make better policies about how to administer medicine to people. So absolutely, yes, it does matter uh, that evolution is a theory and that it is important. So let's look at some categories and major misconceptions. Um, this one is about the theory itself and the process behind it, so more of a conceptual one. So. Evolution results in progress. Organisms are always getting better through evolution. Absolutely not true. Survival of the fittest is one way that leads to this kind of misconception. Fitness is a measure of reproductive success, how well you survive and reproduce. So it's not necessarily that you're the biggest or the best. It's just that you're good enough. You're just fit enough. And many organisms have not changed in millions of years. Moss and sharks have changed very little in their evolutionary history. And it's not a ladder or a chain in a single direction from simple to complex. It's more like a tree or a bush with so many different branches. And a lot of those branches end. A lot of organisms uh, go extinct, even if they were so well adapted to their environment. Misconceptions about natural selection. Um, <clears throat> Natural selection involves organisms trying to adapt. I see this a lot with students. There is no trying or wanting or effort put in to adapt. You either are adapted or you're not. New traits are going to show up through mutations. Um, the existing traits are switched up through sexual selection, but mutations give us those new traits, and they are going to be random. They're not going to be able to occur whenever you want them to. You can't mutate and grow wings because you need to fly to get food. Evolution is reactive. It's not proactive. It's, it's reacting to the environment and it's not predicting what is going to happen. They, these organisms, they experience change in the environment and they survive or they don't. Antibiotic resistance is a great example of this. So those mutations in those bacteria occurred randomly. They were already resistant, the ones that survived, and then they multiplied to create new bacteria. The ones that weren't resistant just died. <clears throat> uh, evolutionary trees. So we've seen trees like this before. Now, you might think that by looking at this tree here that a, a cat and a monkey are closely related because they're beside each other, and that's not necessarily true. Or a sea lion and a dog are closely related. That's not necessarily true either, but it is saying that the sea lion and the seal are more related to each other than the weasel is to the sea lion. It's showing relationships, more related, less related, uh, gr grouping them together based on certain characteristics. Now, these branching points here would represent common ancestors that these guys have. So, even though this branch here gave us the raccoons and the bears versus the dog, that doesn't mean that since the dog branched off here that it evolved from a bear or a raccoon. Uh, misconceptions about the nature of science? Evolution is just a theory. Well, in casual conversation, a theory would be like a guess, and that's, that's an okay use in, in casual conversation, but for scientific theory, it is a collection of many hypotheses, and they're going to be supported by evidence, and they can predict and change with the evidence. Gravity is a theory, uh, but it is not a theory that you just say, well, gravity is just a theory, uh, so I can just jump off this building because it's just a guess. Um, we know very well how gravity works, and it's built off of a lot of information that is supported by evidence and tested. 
Uh, misconceptions about the acceptance of evolution. Evolution is flawed, but scientists won't admit it. Well, scientists are always gathering new evidence, and new perspectives do emerge. But with any science, it's going to continue to be refined and improved as you get more evidence and test more ideas. Um, it is a competitive endeavor where things change and develop all the time. And many scientists are going to be eager to uh, correct and address any flaws to make sure that their theories fit what evidence there is. So, for example, the Piltdown Man uh, is a, or was, a fossil of a human-like species that was considered to be a missing link. Well, um, turns out it was a hoax. A hoax. Now, there are many different uh, human-like fossils that we can find and compare to humans uh, that, as far as we know, aren't hoaxes. And we have since had to adjust uh, our knowledge and evolutionary theory to exclude this Piltdown Man over time. So as we learn more, we change and try to make it better fit what we do know. Uh, the implications of evolution. If students are taught like they are animals, they will behave like animals. Well, if you want to behave like an animal, that's your choice. We can't make you do this or that. We just got to present the information to you. Part of evolutionary theory includes the idea that all organisms are related. Absolutely. But this lineage is not uh, a main trunk. It's a small twig on the branch of life. In a biological sense, we have animal cells. We are absolutely animals. But humans are going to act like humans. Slugs act like slugs. Squirrels like act like squirrels. But just because you learn that you are related uh, to animals in one way or another doesn't mean that you're going to act like a jellyfish or a raccoon or anything else. <clears throat> uh, misconceptions about evolution and religion. The idea that they are incompatible, that they don't work together. Well, some religious beliefs are going to explicitly contradict science, like the literal idea that the earth was created in seven days. That does not gel well with the millions of years for development of species. Uh, but other people view it in their religion as uh, part of something that brings deeper understanding. The biodiversity and the wonderful things that are happening with life uh, makes the world all the better and uh, the the forces behind it that much more meaningful. So, and a lot of people just view science and religion in different realms. Science deals with natural stuff, religion uh, deals with the supernatural. And uh, science tell, tries to predict and understand the world, but it doesn't tell you how to live. Uh, whereas religion has more of the uh, moral teachings. And thousands of scientists who are devoutly religious would also accept evolution. They are there all around. And misconceptions about teaching evolution. So teachers should teach both sides of evolution issue and let the students decide. Well, th there's a problem here. Equal time does not make sense that if the two sides are not equal. Um, again, evolution and creationism in, in the realm of science are not supported by the same amount of evidence. Religion and science are very different endeavors, and science is going to be in a science classroom. Religion is not going to be in a science classroom. Students should have opportunities to discuss the arguments and the evidence within the scope of science. So if it's about the science, if it's the science of how birds evolved, or when they evolved, or how long that took, that would be okay, but not uh, in comparison to some biblical documents. <clears throat> so this idea of a choice for uh, evolution or creation, as in which one do you think is right, is really misleading. So in summary, evolution is blind. It's not progressing in a known direction forward. Organisms aren't trying to adapt. Uh, th this happens randomly, and um, phylogenetic trees are going to be models that show relationships. They're not showing you um, who evolved from who, necessarily. Uh, they're just showing who is more and less related. 
And evolution is an established scientific theory. It's not just a theory. And this theory can develop over time, and it's not religion. And we're not fighting with religion either. We're in different areas talking about different things in different ways. And science classrooms are for science. They're not for religion. And that's it. I hope that was helpful.